13 is that ideal age where the boy is old enough to understand some of the advice that is given to him, but he's still okay. young enough to be receptive to unsolicited advice from elders. In this podcast episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by U.S. Dad and the author of the book, Milestone to Manhood, Stephen Arms. Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Lived experience podcasts about mental health, parenting and marriage on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I do worry about the world that my children are going to grow up into. That's one of the reasons I set up the podcast in the first place. One of the reasons is obviously I'm trying to support dads who, like me, struggle with mental health. But also I think just there needs to be more of a community for dads. Because the knowledge is in the room. We'll all have a different perspective on something. Things with like social media and pandemics, we, with anything, we, we've got more isolated. And I think actually we need more of a community. You're in a different time zone, but that doesn't mean that we can't meet up and create something, a, a community that hopefully supports future generations of young men. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I commend you for starting this podcast and bringing dads together and, and sharing that wisdom. I agree. In some ways, the world has become more isolated because of the internet. In other ways, it can bring people t together. You're in the UK, I'm in the, the United States. And who would have ever thought that we would be able to connect? Yeah, exactly. And that's, I think, that there's good and bad in everything. And the internet I, has brought as much bad probably as it has good. I love the idea of other positive realm, role models in your life writing your letter that's lovely because that's something that you can refer to a it's really old-fashioned and traditional which is nice and because of that i mean the, when was the last time i wrote you a letter or a postcard it, it takes effort to do it you could say on your 13th birthday we'll go away and i might ask three or four positive male role models in your life whether that's your sports teacher your coach your whatever i think that's a great idea yeah and don't get me wrong the, the entire weekend is not chock full of rituals and formalities it's not like a, a stiff weekend that you should have downtime you should have fun activities for me my uncles took me fishing out on the lake for a few hours we caught a few fish i have a picture just the biggest smile on my face going fishing with my uncles at nighttime you can sit around and play cards with the guys it shouldn't be formal ritual the whole time there should be downtime so that you can just enjoy each other's presence. But I think it, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, our society lacks a formal rite of passage. And that's why it's so important to have some sort of rituals built into the weekend so that there is a clear moment that your son can look back on and say, that was the moment that I became a man when I started my journey as a man. Even if you're not physically at 13 a man, if mentally you're starting to think, maybe I can be a bit kinder. Maybe I could be a bit more helpful around the house. Maybe because I've heard it from an uncle or a friend of my dad. Maybe when my dad gets cross or he's a bit snappy, maybe I'm a bit kinder. Maybe actually he's struggling. Maybe it's not that easy being a dad in 2024. I need to be respectful to my, my mom and my sister. I think that's only a good thing. I know full well that if I went on a camping trip with my brother and my son's jiu-jitsu coach and they'd love it they would love it a because they'd be like we're in, a, in an environment of men i think that just being in that environment would be a positive experience for them yeah absolutely why the age of 13 is there any relevance to that or yeah 13 years old we have found is the ideal age for a boy's rite of passage for one it mimics what we see in other cultures so the jewish bar mitzvah is at 13 the Australian walkabout happens around that age, 13, 14, 15. For one, he's, your son is becoming a teenager. So it's already a milestone birthday in his mind. He's leaving his childhood behind him and becoming a teenager. And we also find that 13 is that ideal age where the boy is old enough to understand some of the advice that is given to him, but he's still okay. young enough to be receptive to unsolicited advice from elders. Yeah, By the time a boy is 17, 18 years old, 
he's pretty closed off and he pretty much thinks he knows more than dad. Well, that's, that you're right. That's the problem. 14 and 15, you're too, you're too cool for school. And you think, what can you possibly tell me? 13 probably is the last time when you think, oh, actually, I'm get, I can learn something from these men. Anything beyond that, you might think, I'm over this. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes some sense. How would you like what you're doing to develop? Yep. So that really anybody can hold a rite of passage for their son. It, it needs to be adult male role models that the boy has a relationship with. I'm not interested in organizing a rite of passage event for a stranger's son because I don't know your son. I, I'm not sub- someone that he has a relationship with or necessarily respects, looks up to. So I, I'm not interested in organizing a rite of passage myself for strangers. That being said, What we've tried to do is try to equip other dads with everything that they need in order to hold a rite of passage. So the book tells our family story so that you get an idea about what all this is. But the whole second half of the book is really a how-to guide for organizing a rite of passage for your son. Like step by step, this is what you need to do. We even have an itinerary in the back of the book of, of a sample weekend. Uh, so for any of my listeners, how can they get hold of the book? So the best place to buy a copy of our book is our website, which is milestonetomanhood.com. And we also have a free resource on there for your listeners. We realized one of the hardest parts about organizing these weekends is just explaining to other male mentors what you want to do for your son. What is a rite of passage? What are you going to be doing? And so. We've put together email templates that explains all of this, and you literally go to our website, copy the text, and then paste it in the body of an email. So all you have to do as a dad is just identify two or three or four other men who you want to attend your son's rite of passage weekend, copy, and then paste and send it to them. We would love to hear from any listener who holds the rite of passage for their son. We do have a contact form on our website uh, that you can reach out to us. We also actually have a podcast ourselves, the Milestone to Manhood podcast. And the whole purpose of that podcast is to interview dads who have held a rite of passage for their son. So you can tell us what went well during the weekend, what you might change in the future. It's been really a great experience for me having this podcast because I've been able to see how dads have been changing the weekend around and how they've modified it to suit their sons. For example, one dad, his son is really into the Marvel comic characters. So one of his rituals was he got kind of baseball cards of each Marvel character. And he said, I always want to do the right thing. But then again, sometimes I'm like Thanos and that I get angry. So. He was able to incorporate something that resonated with his son to teach him some more important things in life. And that's only going to make it more re- relatable for the 13 year old, because as you said, if it's too, if, if the subject matter is too dry or too grown up, it might just go over their head. I imagine it's an experience that you'd always remember from the age of 13. I like what you're doing. It, it gives me more hope because I do sometimes despair when I see the behavior of other boys. And I just think it's probably not your fault because actually you haven't got a role model to show you that actually behaving like that or speaking to your mother like that is not good, is is not on. Oh my goodness, I would never have spoken badly to my mother because A, she would have torn a strip off me, but also my dad. He wasn't an aggressive man or a shouting man, but I, I really admired him. I would want to let him down and disappoint him. I think with children, you have to earn their respect. It's like the respect a class shows its normal teacher compared to a supply teacher. The reason there's respect the teachers is because the teacher's done the hard miles. The teacher's been there. It'd be a nice tradition to develop because kids love things like that. They love their birthdays and they love Christmas. They're always looking for the what's the next thing. Because that's a big deal, ten, becoming a teenager for lots of reasons. But if once they t- became 13, they're like, oh, I've got my right of passage party or whatever it is. It could really help. I think one of the reasons we're struggling as a society is that hundreds of years ago, we lived in tribes of 150. So if your dad was a bit useless, but it wouldn't matter because there are probably 20 other positive (laughs) male role models to talk to and help you. 
Whereas yeah. now there isn't that. Yeah, anything that brings dads together, because there are times when I'd love to be able to say to, if I see a, a young a boy being rude to his mum at school gates, I wish I could say, don't do that. But it's not yeah. appropriate. It wouldn't be appropriate. I would never do that. And it probably isn't his fault. You don't know who's bringing him up. Yeah, totally. No, I get it. I can fall into the same mindset thinking about our kids. Our kids are a bit younger. Our oldest is five years old. I think about as they get older, who are they going to be hang hanging out with? Who are they going to be dating? And who are they going to be marrying? Like, I have no control over that kind of stuff. But I've heard the saying once, and I play it in my mind uh, often, that it's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. And that's what I see myself doing with this Milestone to Manhood program and what you're doing with Dad Mind Ma Matters. Is, yeah, it, it can be a pretty grim world out there for sure, but better to do one act of goodness. Yeah, I nothing. agree with you because the, the world out there terrifies me for my children. But I agree with you, as opposed to just sitting in fear of it, doing something is better than doing nothing. I had lots of conversations with men like yourself where I feel like, actually, the world isn't full of horrible men. There are good people around. There are good men and women doing a good job. I just want to commend you for what you are doing with Dad Mind Matters. I think there definitely is like this mental health crisis for men and for women, and you're doing something to try to bring people together and get resources. You care about your children and you're the type of father that every child deserves. So I just really I want Thank you, you to give yourself a pat on the back and for doing something, for being the type of dad who plays an active role in his kids' lives. Like you are the type of dad that this world needs. So that's right. Well, likewise, I think you're doing a good job as well. And I, I, that's really kind to say. I really appreciate that. And I think what's exciting is in a year's time, what you're doing will look different. It'll have moved on. We kind of need to reclaim masculinity. Masculinity has been given a very bad uh, reputation from a handful of not nice men. Well, yeah. that's not all men. Uh, it's our responsibility to reclaim that and go, mm, no, actually, being a man is, is something you should be proud of. I really hope you got something from this podcast. And if you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue and you found a way to make your life slightly easier and you want to share that story, please contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there. So if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care of yourself. My book, First Time Dad, A 42-Week Guide to Pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.